14 construction. What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.tumblr.com, youtube.com slash hardyconstruction, as well as facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction with your host, Comp. Kissed off asshole. As well as. Dingo. Today's film uh-huh. is. Night of the Comet, 1984. Oh, uh. You see, Danny, this is the part where you had the information and you said you were going to oh, say oh, it. Oh, yeah, right, right. I have the information. <laughs> what a great guy this Directed by Tom Eberhardt. Um. Starring Robert Beltran, uh, Catherine Mary Stewart, Kelly Maroney, some other people. Notice how Danny instantly went to the man as the lead of the film. No, I'm Very reading in funny. order. Yeah, oh, yeah, I bet, Danny, I'm sure. It's so, order it's in. I'm sure we know who he's voting for this year. So, Thea, it's Thea's time of the month, which is November, every year in the Hardy Construction, which we have Thea pick four movies, because it's not like five movies she can pick usually. <laughs> 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 oh, it's a man's world. You know so, what I have to say? This is the first movie you've picked recently that doesn't have a horrible rape scene. Oh, yeah, but, God. you know, I was going to bring it up. It's implied. Like, Danny, 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 it. Danny, technically it's implied, so it still falls under Thea's rape umbrella. There is, what is, what is with you and the rape? Promotion. I know, I can't. Well, you know what it is? It's just because 90% of horror movies have it in it. Anyway. Yeah, anytime so, a horror movie that has Sexual assault little, or rape, I would say. Anytime right. a woman is in a horror film that it's a lead character, there's always some inclination of fucking rape somewhere in there. Something bad's gonna happen. So, A Night of the Comet 1984 was directed by Thomas Eberhardt, who was going for a different type of apocalyptic film. I wouldn't say, I guess it is sort of technically a horror film because they have that one zombie scene that attacks a guy. And I gotta say, I wish there was more of that zombie craziness stuff. And I'm gonna uh, go about the poster like I haven't talked about this before, but like I said, my favorite poster in the world, the Night of the Comet yeah, poster. do a whole take and then fuck it up. No, not at all. T- nothing happened. This is like the alternate universe. This is a spontaneous episode here. So the this movie forever this. So Thea, why did you pick uh, Night of the Comet, uh, the 1984 comedy horror science fiction film? Uh, I picked it because it was sort of a movie that I saw later than a lot of like the 80s classics, like Night of the Demons and Night of the Creeps, and it was another Night of movie. There's a lot of Night of. I will say. But I was and trying to find this good, movie so. to see if it was like free on my television, there's like a million Night Ofs. And you can find Night of the Comet for free on YouTube for some reason. There's like a lot of versions yeah. of it on YouTube. Uh, and I gotta say, there's a lot of movies that have Night Of in the title that are pretty good. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It just seems like they're it's good. Like it seems like, you know what, let's put a Night Of and it just adds a little twinkle to the movie. So this of it automatically increases the value. So this film stars uh, Catherine Mary Stewart as Regina. And she is a local um, a movie theater uh, concession, not a concessionist, uh, I guess an usher, uh, who is having a little fling with a projectionist. And uh, this film chronicles her adventure with her younger sister, who is played by Kelly Maroney, who's playing Samantha. As and, and, a, and I'll say it again. I, I, I mean, I'll say it for the first time. Reggie's character was in Weekend at Bernie's. Oh, you mean the movie where the girl fucked the dead body? Was that her? No, it, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't read it. <laughs> the girl, not Andrew McCarthy, the other guy is dating her. Should I bring up the thing I thought I said about Mannequin, or should I just not bother? Because that's it, totally yeah, irrelevant it, to the storyline. It wasn't line. that funny of a joke. I wasn't making a joke. I was just making an ob- observation. As a j- Very good. So this film is about, a obviously, a comic that wipes out most of, of life on Earth. Well, how, Thea, how does this movie start out? So it starts out with... Uh a guy announcing basically that this comet has finally come close enough for people on Earth to see it, and then it sort of, and then it cuts to all the various uh, celebrations and parties that are being held to watch the comet together, as people do sometimes. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> that was like some sort of third country English or something. Uh, do That's you? Right. Do you know how many movies start off with a comet? Night of the Creeps, Killer Clowns. So this many movie. Mario Night of the Living Dead. Uh, it's well, Night okay. of the Living Dead, not really, but yeah, it's sort of like um, yeah. it's sort of an easy way to just throw it. Hey, Spider Man Three, one of the better ones, or maybe it was a Spider Man. Oh, yeah. God. So um, yeah, I think. Uh, what did you guys first of all Armageddon. think of? 
What did you guys think of uh, of um, the narration? Are you used to that? Are you sort of miss that in films when they have a third party narrating nice, the beginning of a movie? Actually, it immediately is like, oh, this is gonna be like a cuddly movie. Does That's it give it a? It does it give what it? What I like about this movie is it gets very quickly to the chase. Yeah, it, I gotta say, this film feels yeah. like three short films put together, but it doesn't feel disjointed. Although I do feel it goes a little weak towards the end, but I still yeah. think it's a great movie. But. Um, so, Thea, you saw this film, you said, late in the game of actually watching horror films. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you, you felt, how many, um, do you say you've seen more horror films from the 80s than you would have, like, in the 90s and the 2000s? Or, I'm not saying I living I, in the 80s, I but... I think I have, probably. Uh, only because I, I really like 80s horror movies, and I feel like it was a good... Do you think that's just the best... Decade? The best decade for horror? Is it something their hair? Is it, is it <laughs> I don't know. You know what it is? Into? You know what it is? It's something, it's just like... It was a time when everything was about sort of like having fun and being frivolous and being silly with things. And they just, a lot of 80s movies, especially horror movies, just felt fun. Like they were just having a good time. Like it wasn't, they weren't taking it too seriously. I think so that's. So a lot of them were fairly like goofy and like silly and fun. I honestly, I, like I think a that. Lot of horror movies I think that goes for most of the films from the 80s. Like uh, you got E.T. and Not the Goonies it. and stuff like that. Obviously, there's some dark movies like, uh, like La- Five, Last of the American like Virgin and stuff like that. But I think what happens is there was sort of a revolt against... Uh, I listened to the Brett Easton Ellis podcast. Thea, if you know who that guy is, he's a writer of American Psycho. And he does talk about how there was sort of a, a bleak nihilism from 70s cinema where everything sort of had everybody dying at the end of their films. And what really stopped it was Jaws and stuff like that, movies from the 80s that sort of had this more positive approach. And I think it was probably like a, a, an upswing financially for the United States that a lot of cash sort of was coming in, the Reaganomics and all that oh, shit. Oh, that's going down the tubes pretty so, soon. <laughs> so um, yeah, apparently a lot of films some sort of had, mostly had a positive message. Even if it was like a, a Nightmare on Elm Street or even Jason films, some characters actually survived through the end and there was like these weird sort of proto-80s and they references. Stuff. And the thing with there are this lessons like in uh, in Nightmare on Elm Street, she gains all the powers of her friends, and they live on through her. Did she have sex in Part Four? I forget. Did she get laid or no? I don't remember. Um, no, I don't, I don't think know. so. Right? So anyway, that's very important to the film. That but I, I think hotel that's part made me come so hard, so it doesn't even matter. But also, Nightmare on Elm Street Two taught you that if you're a homosexual, you can have actual a monster come out of a pool and attack people. So that's what and happens. And also, if you're a gym teacher, <laughs> it's okay to dress in bondage and beat your students. That's true, with, with a leather daddy costume. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. So Night of the Comet is certainly a very unique sort of apocalypse film, and I'm. It is also- very 80s. It is very 80s. What I like about it is it's essentially, and please, no offense at this comment, Thea, but it certainly is, it feels like a chick flick horror movie. Um, it is and I mean, that, yeah. And I mean that in the most positive of ways because it... It, it reminds me of Adventures in Babysitting. Right, I got that yeah, feeling I too. I got that feeling too. What I think, what really um, capitalizes on that sort of chick flick uh, idea for a film is that the two girls actually have a shopping scene at a barren uh, um, store, like a mall, and it's incredible because I was watching as well. I was like, "Holy shit! This is this would be like any other film." But the the idea of these two girls having fun in the middle of the apocalypse is what makes it like so astonishingly cool. Um, mm-hmm. Thea, how does I'm this totally going to shop? Because you absolutely would do that, though. Oh ah, yeah, you? people would, would because you're trying to find some. Well, ask fucking people on Earth, why not? Yeah, I think people would try to find some sort of escape. So, Thea, how does this film start uh, uh, after that whole narration of the uh, of the the comet that's passing by the planet Earth, and it it implied about the dinosaurs dying the last time that it came through. So, I assume we're mm-hmm. supposed to be given this sort of inkling that. This is bad news for people, but She's what are the go down. what are the people doing instead of fr- uh, being afraid in abject horror? People are like, "What? Check it out! It's a comet! <laughs> Let's watch it!" Is that like Seinfeld? That is that was pretty, pretty much good. what they're like. That's pretty much the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. so people are trying are treating treating this more like uh, I just said the comet's like name a big earlier. Party. Yeah, like uh, Haley's comet. It seems um, also to be happening around Christmas, which is only subtly right. sort of referenced, and then very. Obviously, very heavily later. referenced throughout the rest of the film. Um, oh yeah. So I guess this is a Christmas movie too. For so you guys. Reg is a movie. I'm a Jew. Okay. How dare you? That's How why they wiped you, you out first. So uh, I meant in the movie. I hope that somebody didn't take that the wrong way. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, so Reg is the main character. She is uh, a character played by Catherine Mary Stewart. Her sister is Samantha, who is a high school cheerleader. And I think that's one of the things that I remember mostly about this film because I had I'd never watched it until like two weeks ago. And uh, I remember just, I, I like that sort of character 
uh, when characters are sort of in uniform, I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, what, one girl's st- stuck in a cheerleader costume for the he rest likes of the to film. See women in their place is what he's saying. Yes, it's exactly <laughs> what I said. Want them to be individuals. He wants them uniform and ready to go for him. I'm literally uh, holding my testicles as I say this. Anyway, so she, the, huh. the two sisters are uh, ma- magically sur- uh, sur- uh, survive this comet. Both of them happen to be in steel buildings slash walls. They don't seem to care that time. anyone they know died. No one cares in this movie that their loved ones died. Hector finds out his family dies. He doesn't care. Well, he I think he does sort of care. He goes there and then he comes back dressed in a Santa costume. Wouldn't you be crying? So Hector's played Maybe by... He was all the way home. Hector is played by Robert. Hector is played by Robert Beltran, who is mostly known for his role as uh, was it? What the hell is his that name? That guy in Star Trek. Yes, he was in Star <laughs> Trek. He was in Star. He was in Star Trek Vo- Voyager, playing Commander Chakote, which I think was Native that American. Chakote. 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 So, uh, um, so he is a Hispanic character. I couldn't believe it because they make an offensive they racist your joke. Even at the end of the world, they will survive I like will cockroaches. S- I will say I love that Hispanic joke she makes where uh, he has a gun and she says, what's this for a night in the barrio? <laughs> and he gets offended by that. That was pretty funny. Um, so it has two things I can relate to, being an usher and being Hispanic. Very good. <laughs> Excellent movie. Um, yeah, so anyway, this these... This movie was made for you. What, what happens to people when they are exposed to this comet's bizarre radi- radioactive wave, Thea? So either... Most of the people who are directly exposed turn to red dust, dried up by the comet. And then you it's all you could the... make clay with it if you added water? Probably. You could probably build huh. the person back, but go ahead. I Thea. would make a golem. Oh, Jesus. And then the people who are more indirectly exposed, they sort of slowly get this sort of like, it's like a red madness of kinds that turns them quite, kind of into zombies, like they don't have any memories or anything. They lose sort of uh, cognitive function, and then they just are very violent. Basically, we only saw like one full zombie and like half of another zombie. But like, but you can tell like when some of the others start to go, um, like they get more violent. Also, the people in the mall, and they also forget in the mall. Those guys, yeah. When he took his glasses off, did he have no eyes? It looked like I think they they were just white, just like like they go when they sort of start to turn. Oh, okay. So, like we said earlier, the film sort of feels like three... It has very three three different distinctive feels in this film. Um, that it's like three different films with three sort of uh, um, storylines that would be in their own sort of apocalyptic films. Ones where the kids wake up and there's uh, nobody around. Sort of that desolate desolation feeling. Mm-hmm. The second one is going into the mall where they're having this fun and there's these psychopaths running around with guns. Which could be its own right. film, and then the third end is they sort of tacked on um, science, science officers, creepy scientists running and trying to take their blood for nefarious reasons. So, Thea, what is uh, what is the feel? What is feeling do you think this movie conveys? Uh, what what do you think it was trying to go for? I th- I don't know. Like I think it was just trying to go for. I mean, to me, it feels like a like a sort of like woman power ish movie. Just, but I think that's just because it's framed from the point of view of a woman. The second main character is also a woman, and then the sort of the love interest is the guy. So it's not like sort of the typical setup of one of your '80s horror movies where it's starring a guy and the girl might be helping, but she's always just like the love interest, basically. Right. Where the actual women are in charge and taking care of business in the film itself, and they're yeah. actually they're like, moving the, the story along. These girls are like firing Uzis and shit. It's a lot of fun. And, and it, the dad's like a military guy, so I guess that's how they they explained it. It actually made sense, sort of. Mm-hmm. Right. They gave they gave reasoning to why these characters would be able to be so street smart in a sense, and they're you know because you see scenes where the younger sister is talking back to the stepmother. What I was and, trying to imply is that we owe it to a man that these women are so strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it always comes from somewhere, it's from a dude. It's the guy taught them, like, you owe a man for that, okay? But maybe they learned it from their mother, who probably died. No, no, their mother Never Their know. mother was weak. Never go on, know. go on. No, I want you to keep telling this joke, because it's no, fabulously it's funny. Yeah, go for it, There's go for it, Danny. Joke. This is a serious Bring it. story. I'm done. If anybody wants to know Danny's uh, Instagram account. So anyway, um, <laughs> Regina is uh, this strong-willed young lady who's 18 years old. Her sister, I believe, is 16 or 17 in the film. And they're sort of, 
you're right. You guys, they, they, they didn't really give a shit that everybody else was dead. I guess they were sort of bored in their existence that they were living. Their well, fathers... they're trying to live, I guess. They're trying to, like, figure out what the fuck they were going to do next. Everyone they're sort of, like, they're sort of like survivalist mode, I guess. Uh, do you think... just said that puppies were dead and stuff like that, you know? Do you, do you think it was sort of indicative about, like, sort of teenagers believing that they're not able to die? So they're sort of tr- feeling that they're not really in trouble for the most part, or what? Maybe. I feel like it's a bit of that. It's also kind of like the freedom that they suddenly have, right? They're not tied to anything. They aren't told what to do by anyone. Yeah. They just kind of get to do whatever they want, which is like simultaneously cool and terrifying. When we have a nuclear war in a year or two, I <laughs> can't wait to be alive and just walking on everyone's glowing ashes. And just laughing at people? That's right. And then you're going to see yeah. a, a 20-foot radioactive you, Bernie. Doris. A 20-foot uh, Bernie <laughs> Sanders running around. Looking at <laughs> imagine he stealing money. It's radioactive. He becomes like Hulk or something. <laughs> He's just Toxic shooting. Bernie Avenger. He shoots That'd you with awesome. like he has like radioactive breath, like Godzilla. But what it does is takes your money out of your wallet. So yeah, um, he, throws, he has like a giant yamaka. See, Danny he, has like, to make it racist. Uh, can, can, no, he can throw it onto people and, like, capture their souls. And all complaints it. to Daniel hey, I'm himself. I'm a Jew. I'm allowed to say this. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. So, uh, I think uh, Thomas Eberhardt's goal for making the film, I think he said while writing the script, he asked teenagers for their input on what they would do if they survived the end of the world. So, I think it's pretty uh, apparent, it's like, kids this. are just fucking around. Yeah, so... Uh, and also, it's the feeling that... Um, that it, it feels almost like positive because the kids don't go and they get depressed. Like every other apocalypse film I've ever seen, it's like really depressing. Like you look at The Walking Dead, and that's just sort of just being depressed for an hour every week watching that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And every other pretty much apocalypse film I've seen, I don't think I've seen a lot of apocalyptic films like 2012 or some. I can't believe the I saw most that depressing fucking movie. I've ever seen is The Road, and the book is actually more depressing, believe it or not. I read the book, you know, to give a mini thing on The Road. Like, I read the book, and I didn't understand what the big deal was. <laughs> it was just like a guy. I remember they spent like. T- Everything is dead. They were Everything. just talking sentences and sentences of a kid drinking a Coca Cola, and I was like, what the no, fuck it's just is the this? Idea that, like, Literally everything, including plant, plant life, is dead. The Either way, only thing left is 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 your fucking Coca Cola. Co- like uh, canned food and like poison air, and that's it. Cormac McCarthy sounds like a real fun time. Trust me. So the two girls, their uh, best bet is to go to the mall because they want to, uh, I guess, just go shopping and have some fun in this sort of bleak existence. Fuck yeah. So this is the second half of the film where we see the girls at this mall. And I gotta say that the film feels like, since we're watching it now in the year 2017 or whatever the fuck, you're 16, excuse me, we're listening to this, I went to the future and said that, um, (laughs) that it felt modern. I would assume like a movie like, if we made a movie like this, I can imagine uh, uh, today, it would be apocalyptic film. I would assume the the most recent version would be um, uh, uh, This Is The End. I guess that's a modern mm-hmm. version of this film, sort of, with it, but it's more tongue in cheek, which is a very good movie. I gotta say, I, that movie was fucking awesome. So this is the end. It was a really good movie, and it yeah. sort of played with modern music and everything. And I can assume how everything in this film sort of feels da- feels dated watching it, but I can imagine every track that was in this film, every song playing, was totally like the song that was just about to come out a week after the film was released. Because I this love film, you can, music. it's great. It's yeah, it has. Time. It, it's a great movie, and it has a great soundtrack to it. It's uh, um, definitely 80s uh, R&B and jam, or whatever the fuck they call that music. is still well alive in my brain, all the music. Very I mean, much they so. go for the obvious, you know, like, girls just want to have fun. It's the, oh, fucking, totally. the fashion montage and everything. What did you, uh, what did you think of uh, the villains in this second sequence of the film? We also cut out, we, uh, we also are recorded... Are we talking about the scientists, or are we talking about the, the douchey guys in suits? The douchey guys. Both, I guess. <laughs> They were, they were kind of silly and funny. So we we uh we actually recorded a little bit earlier and we had to delete it, but we got to go make fun of Thea again for picking another movie that has rape in it. So this sort of has implied it's rape. It's implied rape. So there you go. We had to bring that up. We didn't even talk about that the first time. We didn't even get to it. <laughs> so uh, these... yeah, no, we cut out the whole thing. But basically, what we concluded is that <laughs> Thea is obsessed with rape. Clearly. She has some kind of sick fetish for it and chooses only movies that feature it. She was obsessed with I would rap. I'd be interested to go back and see how many movies that you have reviewed in total that have some kind of sexual assault or rape in them because it's pretty much most of them. Only the ones you chose, okay? That's right. Oh, That's up. right. <laughs> Thea's next film is Irreversible. But anyway, um, 
<laughs> so the 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 girls are confronted by these three guys, and it leads to this sort of tense showdown with uh, one of the guys shooting their own men. Like every, like you expect that in every fucking horror movie. Uh, why doesn't he just shoot? Uh, whatever. Uh, so the guys are want to turn them into their sort of playthings and just torture them. I assume because they're they've gone insane because of this uh, this radiation that's been happening from the. Uh, they look comic. sharp. They look cool. They got the shades on. They got the guns. They had the same idea that the girls did, which is go to the mall and raid the mall. <laughs> I think they, yeah, I think they actually worked at the mall and they just felt like it was now their territory, sort of I like. I would absolutely do that if I was going crazy. I would be sharp looking when I was killing people. <laughs> That's right. Are you sharp looking right now? No, I'm. Completely so how would you know if you picked the clothes? <laughs> you could see you picking the wrong clothes, like Bay Harbor clothing and shit. So um, <laughs> at the same time, there is a third storyline going on. That uh, has scientists in their little lab um, trying to figure out what's going on with the people that have been left behind. Uh, I guess these are scientists that knew that the comet were, was coming and they decided ahead of time to stay underground. Yet, and then kill everybody that survived. Perhaps. What happens is that they were still affected because I believe one of the greats uh, had holes yeah, in they it. Left the- ducks open or something yeah, yeah. But that's silly because you're gonna tell me that this movie theater was sealed off like okay there's no opening in the movie theater <laughs> or a storage unit i'm not arguing with that or air ducts so one yeah, of the scientists there's is- no air ventilation it was sealed off like a bank vault and it leads you to have this false idea that this female scientist was a villain in the film which i wish she actually had stayed a villain in the movie because, mm-hmm. although, I mean, I was kind of happy that... I liked the, that turn, though. I liked that she sort of turned out to not be... Right, I did like that, too. But I thought it was interesting that they sort of had three villains in the movie sort of thing. Like, they had the stepmother, mm-hmm. then they had the psychopaths, and then they had this uh, scientist woman. It was weird because it was literally watching three different storylines all congealed well, the to... the stepmother's not really a villain. She's just a bitch. And she's dead within the first ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Very well, we good. What a, what do a we fabulous... Know that she's dead? Yeah. She's she, dust. On the she picks up her pants her and she says, Look, I thought this she is was her. just saying, like, generically, like, this could be her. I didn't know she knew it was her. Well, it was the well Danny, she was while, wearing, when so she was, like, well, when the last scene we saw was her outside with the rest of the people that turned into dust, I assume she turned into dust as well. You know what? And her clothes were on the floor, so. You know what? Exactly. What? Very good. <laughs> so um, I want to I make a smoothie out of her ashes. So, um, the third set of villains, the scientists, I thought this sort of felt rushed. Like, I would think in another film they would Definitely. be the main sort of... Like, it felt like, oh, we gotta tack this on to have some sort of um, crazy, insane shootout ending. And it sort of feels a little bit too, like, fuck, let's just put some, let's throw some, tack something on. I still like, like, like the movie. Yeah. Right. Let's, let's have a really big bad guy. Let's make the government a bad guy. Uh, although I don't think these people were directly the government, they it was like really haphazard. Like it kind of reminded me of the CDC in Walking Dead. The oh guy that God, the worst episode. Or Ugh, what a stupid episode that was. Um, but um, I'm sorry, Dan. I know that's your favorite episode. It's not my favorite episode. No, you brought it up, so you must have liked it. So these uh, scientist <laughs> people, or what are they trying to do? They're trying to drain the blood out of people for what reason? Because I completely what forgot. They're doing, so what has happened is. They're all, all the scientists <laughs> basically were infected. Okay. Um, so what they did is they they found a, the people who had survived and not been affected, and brought them back under the guise of safety and like helping them. And then they sort of it seems like they sort of like they put them under indefinitely, like into comas basically. And they're drawing the blood. Presumably, they sort of ish say this, but. Um, they're trying to come up with a cure. They're okay. trying to come up with a cure, but why are they killing people? Well, they're not killing them. They're just like... They're essentially turning them into blood banks. Like, if you've seen Blade 2 or something like that, they'll just take in the body and they're just Stop letting... Stop defending them. them. They can't, they can't mm. kill them because they still need them to produce the blood to use to try and come up with a cure. So, like, theoretically, they could bring these people back at some point, but it seems more or less like they're just not going to do that. All their bodies are ash. No, like the people... The not, people that are not sort of affected. People. I just mean, like, they're going to keep the people who have survived. You know what would be anyway. funny? Imagine, like, you know, in, like, old Looney Tunes, like Marvin the Martian putting a little drop of water... Well, let's on wait for Martian this. This is going to be funny. But... Imagine, like, they go around and they just put a drop of water on piles of ashes and they grow into people. <laughs> no, I like it. No, really. <laughs> so, um... The reason, I, the reason I like that the that Audrey, the, um, the woman scientist, 
who apparently is like, well, Thea, no, Thea, 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 It's scientists. Go ahead. Scientists. Um, the reason I like that she has that turn is because she realizes from herself that the, and she says this, that the, um, the sickness is sort of accelerating. Right. And she's forgetting stuff faster, herself. Right? So yeah. She says they only have hours, they don't have weeks to figure out a cure, which means that they're not going to in time. So she oh, realizes fuck. this, and that's why she doesn't kill Samantha like she's supposed to. She lets her live. It's uh, but it, that, it sort of feels. That, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, she knows that they're like even if they get taken back to the facility, like they're not going to be used for finding a cure. They're just going to get killed because everybody's going to go crazy. That sort of still feels like an unnecessary fake out because she could have just shot the guy and that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> Because uh, she, like, when I saw the part where she um, uh, injects the young girl with so- sodium pentyl, something like that, I forget what they call it, but just basically to knock the girl out, I think she was like, uh, like um, I was like stunned, like, I was like, holy shit, did they just kill yeah, this, like, 17 year old girl, I was like, damn, like, so this, I was like, this is a hardcore movie, and then, of course, the girl wakes mm-hmm. up later in the back of the trunk. Uh, after the doctor ends up killing herself because she doesn't want to go through, you know, being messed up. So does that... She doesn't want to kill anyone. Does Imagine that, they inject her with heroin and that she has, like, an addiction and the whole rest of the movie is her trying to find a fix. And it's a fourth movie. It's a fourth movie and, like... That is she, addiction. She breaks into, like, this, um, you know, this heroin den, but it turns out that it's steel, so all the junkies are in there still. They're alive. There you go. So there's an aspect in this film with Samantha's character who has a, a, a nervous rash that we're led to believe is actually the uh, um, radiation from the comet throughout the whole film. Uh-huh. So we never know really. So do you think that the do you think that the main girls are actually still affected and they're eventually going to turn into mutants or it sort of has a positive? I mean, logically, logically they should be sick, but I don't. I think in, within the purposes of the movie, no, they're, they're they not. actually survive because they actually the other guy DMK whose names are in the arcade uh, that <laughs> Regina like was that. playing that was, earlier that was a nice comes touch. out. That was cute. I thought that was yeah because I was wondering throughout the f- whole film I was like who's DMK like when the fuck is he going to come out? Mm-hmm. Um, and it shows you a. Uh, uh, somebody also was noting the fallacy of the video game credits because they actually got offended because I did too, honestly, like a nerd. That they she repl- choose number six, <laughs> <only. Yeah. laughs> and the guy's name disappears instead of going under a rank for you. Yeah, it's very right. offensive. Like How did? Exactly. What a fuck up! Uh, three stars for this movie um, out of twenty. <laughs> um, but uh, what did you think of Hector's character? Did you like him or what? Sort of there, just fingerlicious. I did like him actually. I did like him. I did I liked, like. I liked all of them in a different way. Like even, I mean, the sister is annoying, but like she becomes right. A little. She beca- I feel like she becomes a little bit more redeemed later on. Mm-hmm. When you realize, like, she, yeah, she's just a dumb kid, but like. I like that when she slapped the shit out of her stepmom. She's figuring stuff out. Yeah, I, I did like her character as soon as she slapped her stepmother in the face. I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah, that's good. Regina oh God, Hector dressed like a cowboy. Oh yeah, that Lord. made no sense. Like that that felt totally out of an '80s weird shit. Like <laughs> yeah, for no reason. Like 80s he comes nonsense as a yes. yeah, because he comes yeah. out speaking with like a Texan accent with a cowboy hat and and everything, and he comes out and then he actually convinces a security guard to look in the back of his trunk it was fucking weird i was like what is this like that's when it started that's when it started just becoming weird like i was like what are they just (laughs) right like i understand it being some somewhat comedic with this film but that part just Mm -hmm. was sort of bizarre like it was not funny it was just stupid but i mean the movie even in all of its like bizarre random shit like even when he comes back in like the santa suit it works yeah yeah it works i I, yeah it's so i mean it's it works if you realize it doesn't It, it works if you completely suspend any idea that this is real and it's just That's a silly movie and to have fun with it. Then I mean, I honestly wish there were any way trying to take it seriously. Like it doesn't work at all. Yeah. I honestly wish there was more. <laughs> there were more zombies in this film because there was just like two two and a half zombies where like the first guy, the homeless guy, and then the young boy chasing Hector around his mother's house. And then that doctor, who I guess was wearing shades the whole time, once he gets into a car, the darkness of a car turns you full mutant or something like that. Um, yeah. Leads to a nice big explosion at the end, but that all feels convenient as like just sort of a way to end a, a horror film. They always have to have some sort of explosive ending, and I'm sure they... Oh, they, they also come out of that place with two kids. Have we mentioned the two random kids? Oh, yeah, yeah. the two kids. The young Asian girl and the young white boy. Um, very... They almost showed boobs, but they didn't, thankfully, so, because they were young boobs. 
So yeah. if they had an African American kid, it would have been a Colors of Benetton ad, just like all the races of the world hanging out at the end because the sisters. Oh, what's the What's the woman that always eats as kids starve? Sally Struthers. Yeah, they could have had Sally Struthers come out. Boy, oh boy. So, um, at the end of the film, uh, Regina and Hector, I guess they decide to play house with the two young kids and they have to start society over again, which is very adult of Regina. And Samantha just decides to run off with DMK in a car and I guess it's the children inheriting the earth um, and restarting it. And it, it is sort of a positive spin on the film that somebody is trying to take uh, <laughs> serious the situation, but I would have loved to see more zombie hordes in this movie. That's just me. Mm-hmm. Well, they all died. Right, but I mean, I think it would have been like awesome to see that somewhere in the middle of the film, but I think that was something they probably didn't have the budget for. Although, I'm wondering, all those extras at the beginning of the film, or that's a lot of extras for they that. had $700,000 to make this movie. Because really watching, nice. watching that beginning, like I thought, oh, I was like, oh, they just used this footage from some like real like comet thing, but there were people holding up signs with the name of the lines. comet. Yeah, like yeah. I was like, you actually see signs from the actual comment that they named in the film and I was like what the fuck I was like, oh well I guess they had enough money for that um, but that could be just some bum fucks that wanted to be in a movie yeah it could have been like throw them each like $25 to do like a quick shot was there it's a before actor gave a shit that's true that's <laughs> yeah. when they decided to unionize so Thea what are, do you have any negative aspects about this film that didn't work for you everything I mean there's a lot of nonsense wow I thought that was her shit. and like of course like that last the scientist storyline is like completely thrown in but I, I think because I liked the character of Audrey, I was just like, all right. I was like, fair enough. I mean, it, it um, is... I don't know. You can't take anything seriously. Also, let's let's just make a, put a point on this. She jumps into a car with a random dude, and they just let her drive away. They're like, yeah, he's probably fine. Yeah. Well, you know what? That just because he survived. Your, that goes with your rape theme. Jesus, you had to bring it back to that. Anyway, uh, yeah, you would. it is a great 80s film. It has that light feeling to it, even... Do, even with the subject matter, it, it's a, it feels fun. It feels uh, uh, like you know ad- adventurous, even though it sort of is stuck in these sort of uh, um, static areas of a, of a radio station at a mall, and then at this science um, location. Um, Danny, any bad parts of this film that you uh, didn't like? Uh, that girl, the sister. The eighties, yeah. Nuts. Danny has a problem with eighties um, attitudes, her, women's her, attitudes. Her fucking gum chewing in her hair, and her whole demeanor. Like, I want to shake her. Well, she's supposed to be kind of the annoying younger sister. Well, for she while. succeeds. Yeah. She succeeds quite well. There you go. Poor Effective, Danny. Then. Um, mm-hmm. I like the film. I thought the negative aspects. I agree with you that that sort of last end was tacked on, and they could have done a lot more. But I mean, I think that was they probably blew their budget with you know shooting at certain times of the day where they couldn't get people on the streets. Um, other than that, Thea, what rating would you give this movie? Uh, I'm gonna give it eight point five out of ten. Fashion oh, montages set to "Girls Just Wanna Have Fun." I'd oh, give wow. it a, a seven out of ten. You wouldn't believe what we have in store for you, Danny. What rating would you give this movie? <laughs> I'm gonna give it uh, a seven out of ten. I agree with you. Seven out of ten. Oh, um, oh seven. Uh, Danny could never uh, ever prepare. Like a cowboy for no no discernible reason, <laughs> so that you could distract a guard. By pretending that a girl is dead for no possible reason, when you could have probably just drove up and shot him really quick. It's wonderful how Danny had no idea what to say, and then he did, and then he just kept going on forever, you much know what? after the point <laughs> he couldn't. I like to talk, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, what's the final word? Bling. Danny, what's the final word? Spoiled banana peel. Deconstruction.